Hi and welcome to the ICMA once again. Uh, thank you for all of your comments on our channel, we really appreciate it. Uh, and it is important because it brings a lot of information into light that we can then have a discussion and questions and whatever you may have, please feel free to post them. Uh, we really welcome that and appreciate uh, that exchange. We want it to be more of a dialogue uh, versus a lecture. Uh, part of our objective with those videos is to educate and to bring into light uh, certain uh, things, lifestyle substances uh, that are affecting your health and causing issues and we would like for you to understand and know uh, all of those different things that can be partly causative factors and partly aggravating factors uh, and certain changes uh, that you can do at home uh, and be aware of so you can create the necessary changes uh, to alleviate uh, some of that discomfort uh, and uh, the inflammation. Uh, I think it's important that you understand the potential impact uh, of a lot of those uh, substances uh, and different uh, type of uh, lifestyle choices and habits that can uh, either contribute to you feeling better or contribute to you feeling worse but we do believe that's for you to understand how those things impact you you really need to understand the internal environment and how things work internally and what the process that is happening that then create uh, the inflammation the discomfort the pain uh, and all the other symptomology that come with that and we're going to try to explain some of that uh, from our paradigm, from our understanding, from Dr. Brisman's research and uh, our years of clinical experience and some information we gathered through the years in which we realized how certain things impact you and why. But again, to understand that, we really believe that you need to understand how things work internally and the process in which it's affecting your body. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to make this as simple as possible because that's not something that <laughs> I have a, an easy time doing. Um, basically, when, when I first started uh, embarking upon this path and I had just graduated Chinese medicine school, I was filled with all this incredible, incredibly profound information on Chinese medicine and why things happen in the body. But I felt that there was holes in, in some of the details for me and it was making it difficult for me to treat some of my patients. I started researching more and more and as I started researching more and more it ultimately took me to my doctoral program to work on my PhD. And through those studies I began to realize and, and uncover many, many books which started to help me fill in the gaps. I needed tangible information. As, as amazing as Chinese medicine is, and I feel that when you're speaking Western medicine, sometimes having the paradigm of Chinese medicine helps answer answer problems for people that Western medicine doesn't provide. But the opposite was true here as well. And actually, what I found was that the two systems together were so much more effective at helping me treat my patients than either one by itself. So, I started reading books like um, Rethinking Pastures Theory, as simple a book as this is, it's an amazing book by Nancy Appleton. This changed, uh, this, this started to change all of my thinking. Um, Microbial Inhabitants of Humans, 
um, by Michael Wilson. I know it's not very good reading. It's great for people who have insomnia and then you can just go to sleep. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, these are the kinds of books uh, that I have referenced in my PhD and my doctoral thesis. So why that's important? Why it's important is all of these amazing books um, provided me with information that I needed to build my model for what I was working on, which was interstitial cystitis. But I feel that it's a model for chronic inflammation in general. And so over the years, Boaz and I have um, been working together and improving upon this model more and more. I'm realizing how relevant all of this is um, to so many chronic inflammatory disorders. So I'm going to try to outline just a very basic outline for people to understand and what we try to talk to patients about in the clinic. Um, in reality, it's, it's much more clinical than that, but um, that's beyond the scope of, of these videos right for right now. So um, the, the center of the, the center of your health, Actually, I just started, I just coined that phrase on, on an Instagram post. I said that, that the belly is the, the real CDC, you know, the Center for Disease Control, because this is ultimately where health begins and ends is in the belly. Because what are we designed to do as human beings? We're designed to take in food, assimilate food, distribute all the nutrients from our food to our organs and our tissues, and excrete through our urine and our feces, right? So if something is malfunctioning in this engine, this center for disease control, then uh, things start to go awry. 80% of your immune system is housed in your small intestine. Okay, so your intestines are not just for digestion, they're for immune function. And through, through that process, that starts to affect everything else in your body. So, um, what happens is, and that's what this book talks about, in normal health, everyone, just normal healthy people, have a small amount of microbial translocation from the small intestine into the rest of the body. And what does that mean, okay? So that means that the intestinal contents, all of those little organisms, all those bugs, nowadays everybody understands the words probiotics and bacterium, bacteria, are, are, are proliferating through our intestines and that's a big part of why our immune system functions or doesn't. Our digestive systems function or doesn't. There's like a, it's like an ocean, like an ebb and flow, a tiny little migration back and forth from the small intestine into the lymphatic system into the rest of the body. Well, it actually doesn't go into the rest of the body in, in normal health. It's just ebbing and flowing between the small intestine into the lymph, okay? Because that small intestine is lined with lymphatic tissue called Peyer's patches. Okay, so it's an ebb and flow, maybe 3% to 5% um, daily at any given time of the day. Whatever we ingest whatever we do, whatever stress levels we're, we're going through, whatever medicine we take, what water we intake, all of these things will affect that ebb and flow over time or not, depending on how we take care of ourselves. So if we're ingesting things that are affecting us in an adverse way, that ebb and flow starts to increase. It, it will go back and reverse itself if we continue to do more healthy things. So depending on what we do with our, with our daily routine, that will affect that ebb and flow. So for example, if we're on some kind of a very strong medication, if we're under an enormous amount of stress, um, if we start binging on sugar or alcohol or any one of a number of other things, um, that are not in our best interest for our health, that ebb and flow is going to increase and increase and increase until ultimately the dam kind of breaks, so to speak. And so as that dam breaks, and that's kind of, I think, what people are calling leaky gut syndrome. You know, I, I think leaky gut syndrome is, is definitely the phrase that, that has been coined all of these years. But 
I felt that I didn't quite understand or grasp what it was that they were saying. And so when I discuss low-grade microbial translocation, I'm actually delineating a process through which all of this happens in a way that made sense to me and in a way that was very helpful for us in the clinic all, all of these years. So as all of, um, there's a migration into the lymphatic system and then ultimately into all of the tissues and organs of the body, one starts to get inflammation. That inflammation could be fibromyalgia, it could be migraines, it could be stomach aches, it could be um, vulvodynia, it could be uh, interstitial cystitis, it could be chronic fatigue. Um, it's very, very common, and I talk about that in my thesis as well, for a person who has chronic inflammation, one chronic inflammatory disorder, they usually have two or three or maybe even four. And, and that's the reason why, because it's, it's one tree trunk with many branches. And so depending on other factors, um, constitution, depending on how many things you're doing to contribute to your inflammation, that will determine how many branches of the tree are going to be affected. So you could have IC, exclusively, or you could have IC with any one of a number of other chronic inflammatory disorders. But basically what we're saying is that the model, the thing that's driving this inflammation is ultimately the same thing. And so... What we're really saying from that is that it all starts, so begin and ends with the gut. Yes, right? yes. And that... Mm -hmm. To simplify that process is that there are certain things that we do or don't do that either contribute to the gut allowing more bacteria to pass through versus less to pass through and the notion of the leaky gut is how damaged the tissue is to allow more things to pass through and more substances, more bacteria, more organisms that shouldn't and therefore trigger uh, the immune system to have some kind of reaction and that reaction is inflammation and for the lymphatic system trying to clean it all out we have signs of inflammation uh, the battle between our immune system and whatever organism that is and at the same time the lymphatic system is trying to clean things out and eventually is just getting overwhelmed and not doing it as efficiently as it needs to be and therefore it results in an overwhelmed lymphatic system that are unable or uh, not doing it as efficiently or in the amount that it needs to clear toxins out of the system so now we having the immune system constantly creating an inflammation uh, and other organs getting built up with all other the, organs the, getting built up with the liver and, and the large intestine and also the, the lymphatic system is there not able to remove toxins the way they should so now we have toxic accumulation in the system that's affecting all of those organs as well as the inflammatory process then then will manifest in all of those other tissues getting affected and when we talk about our lifestyle, our substances that we consume, medication, uh, what have you, it really is how it is it affecting the gut, the gut wall, is it helping it uh, el to allow more bacteria to pass through or less bacteria to pass through. So really when we talk about different lifestyle choices, diet, medication, recreational drugs, uh, we'll be really talking about how it is affecting the gut, how it's affecting the wall, and its toxic accumulation in relationship to how, even more so, the lymphatic system can handle and process and clear that out. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the second video. Please remember to, uh, to like and to subscribe and to please comment. And if you have questions or if you have any subjects that you would like us to cover in future videos, please let us know. We really appreciate the commentary. See you next time.